No, scam. that is... I think that's illegal. Do you think that it is necessary for graduates right out of college to get an agent right away? On the town, cats, any of like the Broadway shows that are like dance heavy, our, our agency was always involved with that. It's very obvious that they're lying. Some! The more understanding you have of the business side as a whole, the more understanding you'll have as a performer. Hello everyone, it's Brooke here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the second episode of Broadway Talk. I am so glad that you guys seem to really love the previous episode. And if you haven't checked that out, it is an interview with a Broadway actor and everything to do about college auditions and questions involving that and advice. So if you wanna check that out, I will have that link down in the description below. But today we are talking everything to do with agents and agencies. This episode is more for my upperclassmen, um, recent graduates. This will give you more of a professional insight from a professional agent. And today's guest star is Adam Ray Siegel. He is a NYC-based agent. Adam originally started out as a performer and then he slowly went into the more business side of theater. And he is an agent. He has worked as a producer as well. So he is going to be giving us some real insight into everything you really need to know about when looking for agents Agents. Should I get an agent? What does the cut of an agent get out of my paycheck? All things that are really, really useful that I think that you guys will really love hearing. So yeah, and if you are really interested in hearing more about life as an actor, um, answering any questions about being in business of musical theater, the performing arts, make sure you are subscribed and I post content all about that now. And I also post health, lifestyle, fashion, all that type of stuff. So leave a comment down below what comments and questions you have next. And yeah, let's go and meet Adam. So hi everyone, my name's Adam Ray Siegel. I grew up out in this outside of San Francisco and I went to school down in LA. Um, after doing a lot of theater camp, um, realizing early on that theater wasn't necessarily for me as a performer, so I actually went a little bit more on the business side. So I went to school down at the University of Southern California in a business and film program that was geared towards people who were um, kind of in the business of show business. So um, the cool thing was, since it was in LA, it was very Hollywood focused, but I was that one theater kid who loved Broadway and wanted to move to New York. So um, I worked at a talent agency while I was in school, starting out as an intern, then becoming an agent assistant. And then right out of graduation, I moved to New York and I was the, I headed up the theatrical department for an agency called MSA, um, at Donald Sells and Associates, that primarily focused on dance and choreography. So a lot of the shows with um, Dancing with the Stars, So You Think You Can Dance, or even big Broadway shows with dance, like On the Town, Cats, uh, West Side Story, any of those we worked on. Um, I also hopped around to a lot of different things within the Broadway world, too. I worked at a Broadway marketing agency. I've worked for individual producers. Um, I also produce myself. I produce um, an off-Broadway show that got the New York Times critics pit that I'm very proud of called Beyond Babel. I know, I'm very proud about that. That's it's a so great cool. show. That's I highly recommend it. Um, thank you. Um, also, I produce um, a lot of kind of like immersive theater shows, too. I do a lot of stuff with magicians, with um, contortionists, variety performers, sideshow. I also myself am a fire performer, so I do fire eating, fire spinning. I've done like over, I think almost like 200 performances now. So and I also, um, uh, I try to volunteer where I can. I'm on the board of directors of New York Theater Barn, which is um, a nonprofit that specifically um, allows writers and composers to create new shows that traditionally aren't seen. So a lot of um, LGBTQ voices, uh, people of color. Um, it's been really great to work with them. And I also work for a nonprofit called Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. I'm sure a lot of you have seen them with the plastic red buckets, either at Broadway shows or on national tours. We essentially produce events within the Broadway community to fundraise as much as we can. And then we give a lot of it to the Actors Fund, which is a nonprofit with some great resources, as well as um, HIV and AIDS organizations all across the country. So I've kind of worked in a lot of different aspects of the Broadway world, and um, I'm excited to to share my insight into everyone. Sorry, for everyone as well, too. You really dabbled in everything. You really have. I, I've got a hodgepodge. I Yeah, I, like I said, I, I'm happy I realized kind of early on that I love performing. I grew up loving theater, but for me, 
the, perf- the actual performance side wasn't really where my skill set was. I, I can't sing, and I'm not a great actor. I can sort of dance. Dance is sort of my thing. But, um, but no, it's been really great to sort of find my own voice within the Broadway community, too, because you only really see, like, probably, like, um, your favorite performers on Broadway, and maybe you know some composers or you know some directors here or something like that. But it's a whole industry with it's it's a business it's a full business that there are so many moving parts to it and it's really cool well, when you find out how small it is it's just what you see that's exactly it's performing is what the public sees and everything beneath that to make that performance happen is all the people beneath that and people don't even exactly. think about how much like oh my like even in the film industry like when i i did some extra work for Disney Channel, I did um, for the nice. Disney Channel High School Musical series, the TV series on Disney Plus. That's I, amazing. Add that to your resume. Yeah. Add that to your, your <laughs> list of resume, please. Will, yeah. that, that, that's when, a good thing. That's really good, actually. Yeah, when I did that, um, I, I did uh, two episodes on it. And um, I was just really in, I wasn't in awe, no offense, no shade to the actors, not giving tea, but I wasn't impressed by them as much as I was impressed by the whole crew like behind yeah. the scenes just like even like um i just saw like the managers and the agents constantly on their phones i was really impressed by just everyone the, all the moving parts and pieces because it's so much just to get that one shot one take it's, it is and it's good that you have that insight because a lot of people don't and they think it's only singing dancing acting which is what happened to me growing up in california i thought the exact same thing so if you want sort of a little scope into that, I think like the next time you go see a show and you look at the playbill, obviously usually the performers, usually the leads are in the front, but like look through some of the other pages and you'll start to see like, oh wow, there's like so many costume people or so many lighting people or ushers or producers or marketing people. There's, it's a whole business that yes, performers are the front of it and they're usually the faces that we recognize. Yeah. But there's also so much of how people work together in this world too. So the more understanding you have of the business side as a whole, the more understanding you'll have as a performer and how to work within that field too. So it's yeah. great that you know that now, honestly, because I didn't even realize that when I moved here as much. Like it takes time to learn that. So this person was asking when it, if you're not sure if you want to go into film or like dancing or Broadway or whatever, if you kind of want to like do all performing routes, should you look for an agent that is tailored more towards acting or the musical theater industry or are there some that do both? Like what is that? Like when you're looking for that type of thing, are there certain agents that like focus more on one thing? That's a really good question. Um, so every agency is going to be a little bit different, but in general, the agency structure is that there are departments. So for example, with mine, mine was primarily a dance and choreography agency, okay. meaning that we specialized with those. That was kind of our, like we were always at the top of the calls for those. So like for West Side Story, On the Town, Cats, any of like the Broadway shows that are like oh, cool. dance heavy, our, our agency was always involved with that. That's just sort of like how it goes. But within that, you have specific departments. So like I said, we have, I was in charge of theatrical. Later on, I was in charge of specialty, which is kind of stuff that isn't singing, dancing, or acting. So maybe I have like contortionists or fire performers or something like that. Um, there's also um, on camera departments. There, there's all different types. So in terms of, I guess, finding the agency that's the right fit for you, I would kind of ask around to your friends. If you know people who are in major cities like LA or New York or even other ones because Atlanta has a really booming scene right now because Marvel, TBS are all down yeah. there. Chicago obviously has a fantastic theater scene too. Um, internationally, there are some great ones. So you can kind of ask around to get a feel for what people like with their agents. You can also look on their website and kind of see where their specialty is. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the nice thing about a good agent is that they'll represent you across all of this. And actually, when I sit down with potential agent clients, I sit down with them and I talk about what their goals are. And if I hear, if someone came to me um, when I was working at this dance agency and they asked, hey, so you know what, like, I really want to be on HBO. I want to be um, a celebrity on HBO. I want to star on their comedy shows. And you know what? I might tell them, 
truthfully, like, I think you're very talented, but I don't know if I'm the best person for you to represent this because I mostly know dance stuff. And yes, I have TV experience and I know how to do that, but you might want someone who's a little bit more straight acting, a little bit more like someone who spits, um, who specifically represents primarily actors. Um, so, so I think if anything, instead of trying to say, oh, I need to go for these agencies, I think it's a little more important to figure out what your specific goals are and then convey those to the agents when you message them. And if, if they are a fit, that's fantastic. If they're not, then um, they might recommend others or you'll be able to help find others too. Um, okay, so cool. I think that's, yeah, so that's kind of the best approach for that, for the person who asked that question. But it, it's good to think about that right now. And it's also completely okay for that to change. You don't have to keep the same goals you had when you first moved to New York as you do 10 years down the road. Okay. Next question. <laughs> um, what do you think would be the number one mistake or um, misconception you see actors make when coming to an agency, um, whether that be with material faulties or the way they present themselves, just a common thing that you might have seen? I would say the biggest mis mistake that people shouldn't do is lie on their resume. And I think a lot of students, right when they leave school, they have a perception that, you know what, like, I need to say whatever I can to get into the door and all of this stuff. And as I mentioned earlier, Broadway, it's a surprisingly small community of people who have worked together or you know people from back home or you took master classes with people. So when I see someone's resume, especially if they want me to represent them as an agent. Uh -huh. If I see a name I recognize, oh, I, I knew this person, we worked together on this project. I might give them a call and ask how this person was to work with. Um, and if you're lying and you're putting that you shared the stage with Lin-Manuel Miranda or <coughs> something like that, and you didn't, people are going to know that. Um, so have, have that, people made really that bad of lies on their no, resume? No, that's that's an absurd no, 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 one. So no, no, I'm not going to say no, no, not that specifically, but like, have they put like very like well known productions or people that it's very obvious that they're lying? Some, some, and that's wow. And you know what? That's that's ballsy. It's unfortunate to that. And I think <laughs> I think part of that comes from people think that they need to come in with ready credits that they're good to go, or lie about certain roles that they did in the past. But honestly, you are a student. You maybe did some local theater growing up. You maybe were in some regional productions or did commercials. We know that you did all of your school productions probably, but like, unless you were a child star or something like that, you really shouldn't have these credits and that's okay. I think it's all right for theater people to know that it's okay to come in as someone kind of fresh. Maybe you haven't done something in New York and by no means does that mean you're not a good performer. It just means that you have a different kind of experience and it'll take time to cultivate that. So do you think that it is necessary for graduates right out of college to get an agent right away? Or do you think it's not necessary? Do you think that, I, I know as a talent agent, you probably have like a bias in that way, but actually like looking at like yourself maybe, like as a student, do you think that getting an agent right away really helps people or not? It, it depends. It honestly depends on how good of a partnership it is. And also, so one thing to consider is kind of what your situation is. So if you just moved to New York and your one objective is to try to get an agent as fast as possible, you might possibly neglect your health. You might neglect your housing situation. You might neglect making money because like I said, just because you book an agent doesn't mean you're going to get money rolling in right away. It might take weeks, months, maybe like years to book something. And even after you book something, you're not getting paid right away. So I think if anything, the big priority should be about finding comfortable, a comfortable situation um, of finding some solid housing, maybe building a nice network, maybe finding a part-time job or something that is flexible. So one thing that would happen a lot with me with new clients that I learned is if I find someone right out of school, they moved to New York and they did an agent, we decided to sign them, that's great. The one thing you have to consider with agents is that you're going to have to have flexibility for auditions. 
And of course, it's nice when somebody's a full time performer and they have time and they're able to do that. But if you're also balancing that with a full time job that isn't flexible, that makes it difficult, which is sort of why there's that stereotype, which exists for a reason, of people working service jobs. Maybe you work as a waitress or you work as a bartender or something like that. And the reason those stereotypes exist is one, those roles are usually very personable, which I find theater people are usually. Well, because they, they're they acting. They're acting. Communication <laughs> skills. It's they all do about exactly. It's all about being yes. inviting, you know. Exactly. So obviously, performers are usually very good at that because we're good at faking that, or we actually <laughs> are like that.、Um, but the other reason that exists too is because those jobs are very flexible. It's very different to do that kind of job as opposed to a ten to five office job. Where you are maybe like working at a finance company, and you're paid on the clock for those hours. And you know what? It's kind of hard to leave, let's say, on a super last minute audition to go sing some sides and bring your book and like change and wear an outfit、I'm、and、so、all this、stressful. stuff too. <laughs> exactly. So, kind of, I, I would focus honestly a little bit more about getting comfortable and finding a little bit of stability first. While still looking for an agent as well, too, if that's what you want to do. So you're hinting also, at financial stability in a sense. I would, I would say so. Yeah, because like I said, a lot of people think that cool, I made it, I have an agent. But you're like, no, you don't. I, I, I've had people who we signed to our agency who didn't book something for six months or or longer, and that's no reflection on them as a talent. That's just sort of what happens in the industry. And also, I. Shameless plug, but one of the things that we fund at Broadway Cares is an organization called the Actors Fund,、okay. which is、um, not specifically for actors. It's for literally anyone in the performing community, from performers to ushers and ticket takers.、Okay. And they have a lot of really fantastic free resources for、um, healthcare, for learning about financial situations and budgeting, for finding affordable housing. There are actually like a few specific. Affordable housing initiatives for performers. That's awesome.、Yeah. I would recommend that the Actors Fund. I would just take a look at the website. It's free. You don't even necessarily need to be in. There are certain things you need to be like a union member with Actors Equity.、Okay. But there's a lot of just good free resources. Like even I'm signing up for like free online webinars about budgeting. Or about. We need、um, more budgeting classes for actors. I really believe. I agree. In, in, I agree. Like, in、yeah. programs, like any, I think any performing arts program should have a budgeting class on how to market yourself as an actor and how to manage、agree. yourself as an actor online. Yeah, I will. I will say this. It's unfortunately a problem of the musical theater education world because. Logically, you would think that's I, w- I should learn budgeting. I should learn how to brand myself. I should learn how to network because it is a business. But for them, a lot of the musical theater programs, and that's not to diss them. I understand why they are like this, but their objective is more the arts side of it. They want to cultivate your talent, whereas very few actually have the professional side. So that's why I really recommend the stuff of the Actors Fund because it's free, and also you're speaking to people who specifically know your. Your challenges as a performer, as opposed to, let's say, an accountant who might not understand. Wait, so like, why do you need to spend all this money on headshots and like photos? Like, why? Why would you do that?、Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Why, which are, which why are, are you、expensive. spending so much money on makeup? Why are you spending <laughs> exactly, money on like、exactly. a ring light? Why do you need that? I need to pay my vocal teacher, and I need to see them at least once a month to keep my vocal cords in shape. Like, the Actors Fund is specifically resources for performers. Usually, by performers within the field too, so、um, that's why I highly recommend them. Even before you new- move to New York, is worth checking out some of their stuff. I, do you know sort of the the ten percent rule with agencies? Like, does that kind of no? Please, please explain yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Please, please explain. Me, so,、um, so this is the ten. So, what would you call this? The ten percent.、Um, it's the agent. The agency fee. Agent fee. Agent this is the、call. agency fee, guys. Big disclaimer: You should never have to pay to have an agent. Never if somebody, pay to have an agent, guys. Yes. <laughs> if somebody comes up to you and says, "Hey, so like, I'll be your agent. I'm gonna book you lots of jobs. All you need to do is pay me a thousand dollars, and you'll be on my roster." No,、Scam. that is. I think that's illegal too, because you have to have a、oh, license to be、I、an agent. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> it is. So it's not. So it's not good. Do not do that.、Um, what an agent does is, if I meet with you, so we have a great meeting. You just moved to New York. I sit down with you. I'm. I I can say you know what like I'm actually looking for people like your type. I think that I can actually like help you out.、Um, so I want you to be my client. So I, you basically sign usually an agency exclusivity client that basically says like 
for Broadway stuff or for theater stuff or on camera, I am your agent. Nobody else is. Okay. And the only way that I get paid is if I book you on a job. So I, I email all the casting directors. I send you all of the stuff. You're the one who actually goes to the auditions or submits the material. So I'm going to help give you sort of these opportunities. And it's kind of up to you to make those happen and to book it. Mm -hmm. And when you book it, I get 10% of that job. So if you think about it, you're not technically giving an agent any money unless you book work. Okay. That, that makes yes. sense. And it's usually 10%. Sometimes you negotiate with the actual person who's like the producer or whoever or the casting director. Sometimes an agency will do 10% on top, which is really nice. So let's say you're getting paid like $2,000 for a one day shoot on a commercial for Skittles, whatever. So you're doing a Skittles commercial, $2,000. Sometimes the agent will negotiate, so our fee, so 10% of that, of 2000 which would be 200 I would negotiate that so it's on top of all of it. So essentially, once we finish it all, I still get my $200, my 10%, mm -hmm. but actually all of the money goes to you. So that's, okay. that's not usually done for Broadway stuff, I would say, okay. because Broadway, they have very specific contracts that they have to do, especially yes. if you're Actors' Equity. Mm -hmm. You have to stick to a lot of specific things, but kind of for these, like, one-off jobs of like a commercial where they're like like i said for skittles where they're shooting for one day or maybe like a quick theater project like for um a reading or a lab kind of for a new project that's in development those maybe they'll negotiate those it's probably not the best example because there's contracts there but anyway um my main takeaway is do not pay directly for an agent an agent should not get any money unless they book you on a job and that's, I, I think that's a really important thing for people to know. Write it in stone. School. It'll be across the street. Truly. <laughs> I think it should. That's, it, it, that's like, honestly, probably the biggest takeaway I want to give anyone looking representation is it should be a partnership and they should not make any money. You should never have to pay money directly to an agent if you are not booking a job. Well, thank you so much, Adam. This was so fun. And I honestly feel like I learned so much just by talking to you. That was so helpful, thank you. And yeah, I really hope to see you next time I come back to New York. Let sure. me know, Ho hopefully we open up soon. So yeah. we'll see what happens when Broadway returns. Yeah, hopefully. And I wish you the best with um, all of your future endeavors. And again, thank you for taking the time out of your day. Anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this second episode of Broadway Talk. And please comment down below what other topics you want me to touch on next. I'm thinking about doing a self-taping um, type of video to help you guys with um, submitting virtually for auditions. That's my next idea, but like comment down below what you guys wanna see and I will really try and put that out for you. So yeah, and thank you for the support and I love you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day. Bye everyone.